Hello everyone, this is Older Martins, and today I want to speak to you about the privilege of giving. See, God exercised his privilege in giving us his son, Jesus Christ. See, he could have decided not to give Jesus. He could have kept him. God was perfectly happy with the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost existed before the foundations of the world. So he was perfectly happy in himself. However, he chose to give us Jesus Christ. If God had kept Jesus Christ, he would have been perfectly just to do that. By the same token, if God had decided to send us all to hell, he would also have been perfectly just to do that. Why? As sinners, we deserve hell. The Bible says, the wages of sin is death. But God chose to give us Jesus Christ that we may be eternally saved that we may be with him. So God exercised his privilege in doing that. In light of that truth, how should we respond to God's magnanimous gift? How should we respond to God's magnanimous gift? See, there's nothing that you and I can give to God to Replace what God has done for us in Christ. There's nothing that we can do. There's no way to earn God's gift back. There is no way we can pay him back. We absolutely cannot outgive God. And so we start from that knowledge. We can't outgive him. However, there is something that we can do. See, God's gift to us was sacrificial and complete. He gave everything, everything. He gave the best of, of himself. He gave us everything. So, obviously, if God can give the greatest thing that he has, everything else is crumbs of the master's table. Again, in light of that truth, how should you and I respond? What should we do for the Lord that has given us everything? How should we respond? Well, we can respond three ways. We can respond sacrificially. We can respond cheerfully. We can respond generously, well, I guess four ways, and we can respond secretly. Again, sacrificially, cheerfully, generously, and secretly. Well, what do we mean by responding sacrificially? Well, 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 24 says, this is King David speaking, I will not offer to the Lord that which costs me nothing. King David said, I will not offer to the Lord that which costs me nothing. So when we give to the Lord, we want to give sacrificially. What are we sacrificing? What is it that we could sacrifice? Well, there are many things. We sacrifice time. We sacrifice energy. We sacrifice money. We sacrifice talents. All for the glory of God. There was a story in the Bible from 1 Kings 17. This is the story of Elijah and the widow. See, there was a drought in the land and God sent Elijah to a widow and her son. See, the widow was about to feed her son and she felt that since there was no more food, she would feed her son their last meal and die. And so prophet Elijah came into this situation. 
Prophet Elijah asked the woman, Can you give me bread to eat? And the widow said to the prophet, Sir, I only have a little bit of flour and some oil to make bread. I have enough just to feed my son and I, and then we die. And so the prophet said, Go ahead and make the bread. Feed me first, and then feed yourself and your son. Well, the end of the story is that the woman and her widow had enough food to last them through the drought. They sacrificed, she sacrificed the last bit of oil and flour that she had. She trusted God by obviously trusting God's servant. She trusted God. She sacrificed. She sacrificed. So she, she, she gave back to God by offering a sacrifice. And that sacrifice, by the way, was obviously accepted. See, in this world, we sacrifice everything for earthly things. Our people sacrifice to go to school. Uh, they save up money, they work a second job, they sacrifice energy, they sacrifice time. Well, getting an education is very important. Obviously, that is worth it in earthly terms. People even sacrifice to buy a ring for their fiancé. Some don't have enough money, so they sacrifice. Uh, they sacrifice buying other things so that they can save enough money to buy a ring for their fiancés. And so in the earthly realm, we sacrifice all the time. For anything that we desire in the world, we sacrifice to get it. How much more we ought to sacrifice for the Lord that gave himself up for us. Remember, he gave himself up for people that do not deserve it or people that are not worthy of that gift. He sacrificed everything. How much more we ought to sacrifice our time, our energy, and money for the Lord's work and for the Lord. The second aspect of giving is we need to give cheerfully. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Well, you may say, why? Why does God love a cheerful giver? Well, it is all about the attitude. It is all about the attitude. God loves a person that has the right attitude in giving. See, when God gave, he did not give grumbling and complaining. He gave. He gave cheerfully. He gave cheerfully. How would you like a gift from your son if he offered that gift in a bad spirit? What if he just threw you the gift and said, Father, take this. I don't care if the gift is a million dollars. You will send it back and say, I don't want it. Well, you should anyway. You should send it back because he is given it with a bad attitude. God loves a cheerful giver, the Bible says. See, the cheerf cheerfulness, the attitude of the giver reveals how sincere the giver is. So God loves a giver that is sincere in his heart. Number three, God loves a generous giver as well. See, I'm not talking about money, uh, specifically. When people think about generosity, they mainly, they have a narrow view. They think of someone giving money. There are so many other ways that we can be generous to God. Yes, we can be generous in our devotion. Yes, we can be generous in our work. Yes, we can be generous in our heart. Yes, we can be generous also when it comes to giving our energy as well as our money. God loves a giver who is generous. It has nothing to do with the 
uh, amount of money, it has to do with the heart of the giver. See, if a person is interested in a woman, for example, uh, especially while they're still dating, that man is very generous towards that woman. Why? Because he wants to show his love for that woman. So he's very, very generous. See, we ought to be even more generous to God. We ought to be more generous to God. God loves a generous giver. God himself gives generously. He holds nothing back. He gives generously. He holds nothing back. So we also ought to be generous when we are giving back to God. The other aspect of generosity is this. When the apostle was talking about those that gave in 2 Corinthians 8, 2, those people that were given in the, uh, um, to the apostles, the, the scripture says that they were actually poor. They stretched themselves and they gave and they gave generously. So generosity does not have to do with how rich or how poor a person is. It just has to do with the condition of the person's heart. Be generous in your heart towards God. Another area of giving is secretly. See, the Bible says, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. When we give, we want to give secretly so that the Lord that sees it all will announce us publicly. Sadly, this is not the way it is in the public realm today. We see many people, especially um, celebrities, showing off and saying that, oh, this person donated a million dollars to this, that person donated a hundred thousand to this. They are not following God's law. God says, do not let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. The Lord that sees everything that sees what you're doing in secret, he will announce you, he will announce you publicly. Publicly, You don't have to announce yourself. When you announce yourself, the Bible says, you already have gained your reward. Let the Lord announce you. Do your giving secretly that the Lord may announce you publicly in his time and in his way. That's the other aspect of giving. When you give, give secretly. Do not let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. And the Lord that sees everything, he will bless you publicly as well. The other area, the other question is this. How much am I supposed to give? How much? I don't know. People often ask this question. Many times they ask this as it relates to perhaps tithing. Well, the Bible says 10% of what we earn. But many times when people say how much, um, it, 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 it's really in relation to perhaps the person not even wanting to give a whole lot. And so they ask, how much? How much should I give? Again, in light of what the Lord has done, he has given everything. He has given everything, everything. So how much should you give? Well, the Bible says, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Again, I'm not just talking about money that is too narrow. In fact, the Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians, they gave of themselves to the Lord first. They gave of themselves to the Lord first. And so how much? Well, give all of your heart to God. That is what he desires, all of your heart. Give all of your heart. Give it bountifully to him. Do, do not withhold a part of your heart. How would you feel if your wife or if your spouse withheld 
50% of her heart and gave the other 50% to Billy. If you were a guy, you would be furious, saying, how could this be? I don't want you anymore. Of course, of course, it's that, and, 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 and yes, you ought to be furious because when the Lord joined you together, he joined two whole hearts together. And so we must also treat the Lord with the same respect. We must also treat the Lord with the same worth. Is he, is he worthy? Is the Lord worthy of all of our hearts? So how much should we give? We should give our entire hearts to God. From that flows everything else. From that flows everything else. So if you decide whatever it is you purpose in your heart to give, whether it's money, whether it's time, whether it's energy, give all of your heart, all of your heart to God. The next issue is this. Why should we give? Why should we give? See, as human beings, we always want to know, what is it? Is there anything in it for me? Is there anything in it for me? That is a natural human response. Now, if I give all of this to God, what is in it for me? That is the natural man. That is the question. Well, the Lord is good. Yes, there is a lot in it for you. In fact, the Bible says that you cannot outgive God. There is a lot in it for you. What? Well, again, the Bible says in the books of Act, in the book of Acts, it is more blessed for you to give than to receive. It is more blessed for you to give than to receive than to receive. Why would this be the case? Why is it more blessed for you to give than to receive? One would think that receiving was better than giving. But the Lord said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Why is it? Well, let's take a look at what happened when Jesus Christ had many people with him and they were hungry. The Bible tells us that there were probably, there were 5,000 men and perhaps uh, in total, there may have been more than 10,000 people together. So all these people had been following Jesus all day long and they were hungry. And so Jesus said, is there any food for these people? Because I know that they're hungry and I don't want them to faint. Is there any food around to feed these people? And so as the disciples went around, there was a young boy that had five loaves of bread and two fishes. Now, what if that young man had kept that food to himself? After all, everybody was hungry, including him. So he could have said to himself, I want this to myself. I don't want to share with others. I don't want to give. But again, look at the divine law. It says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so, anyway, the young man gave his uh, five loaves and two, five loaves of bread and two fishes to the disciples. He gave it to Jesus. The Bible tells us that Jesus took the, took the bread, prayed and broke it. And what happened was five loaves of bread and two fishes was sufficient. In fact, more than enough to feed over 10,000 people. Can you imagine? Now you see the wisdom in that scripture. It is more blessed, blessed to give than to receive. See, when the young man gave, he received a lot more than he gave. That is the blessing in giving. You receive a lot more than you give. And so it almost drives you to wanting to give and give and give and give more because you receive much more than you give than than uh, than you give. You receive much more than you give. Why? You can't out give God. It is more blessed to give than to receive. 
Well, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4, it says, They begged us and they pleaded for the privilege of being a part in helping God's people. These people were begging to be a part of helping to feed God's people. 2 Corinthians 8, 4. Why were they begging to give so much? I think that perhaps they may have understood what we need to understand. God's word that says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. God has given us everything. He gave us everything. It cost him everything. When he gave us Jesus Christ, it cost him everything. There was a, a separation between the Father and the Son, a separation that had never been, that had never been before. When Jesus came, when Jesus was on the cross, there was a separation. When Jesus died, there was a separation between God the Father and God the Son. That must have been huge. That must have been huge. It had never happened before. There had never been a separation between God the Father and God the Son until that moment when Jesus gave up his life on the cross. So God gave us everything, everything. It cost him everything. How should we respond? Well, we know.